Good morning. Today's scripture reading is John 21, 15 through 19. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to, to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are older, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will dress you and lead you where you need to go. You do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. May the Lord have a blessing for the reading and hearing of his holy word. If I were to ask you to give me a list of some of the smart things you've done throughout your life, how long would it take you to, to come up with some things? I mean, would you be able to just snap them right off like that, or would you have to sit there and think for a while? Think for a while. That's what I thought. Um, I think they'd be able to come up with some, but it might take a little while before you, you kind of put those together. But if I flip that question around and I asked you to give me a list of some of the dumb things that you've done throughout your life, how long would that take you to get started? Yeah, you could start immediately. I mean, right away you could go into it, and if you didn't, the person next to you would start for you. They don't. Yeah, remember that one time they do? Because we hold on to those things a, a lot more tightly and longer than we hold on to the good ones. And I, I think it go to work immediately. I know that I could because I thought, okay, so what, what dumb things have I done throughout my life? Uh, I can tell you about the time that I put diesel fuel in a gas truck. Um, that, that, that's, that's pretty dumb. I can tell you about the time the time that I hit a chipmunk in a head to toe cock. Um, and made him run in circles for about three minutes. That was, that was not my greatest moment. Um, I can tell you about that. You're going to think I'm not an animal. I'm not an animal abuser. But one time when I was little, I accidentally threw my dog through the screen door. Um, I thought, that, like, I would hit it, and the screen door would always go flying open. So if the dog was gone in the house, my dad said, toss that dog outside. So I hit it, and I grabbed the dog, and boom, right through the door. The door actually hadn't um, opened on that particular day. I can tell you about the time that I made Kool-Aid with salt instead of sugar. <laughs> I was at Terry's house. Who has a container of salt that's like this big? You expect that to be sugar. Nobody has that much salt. We, I, I figured out after I took my first big um, tip, which is actually better than the time that my brother-in-law, Randy, um, he made muffins out of lemon pledge instead of canola oil. Um, yeah, that did not work out too well. Um, still got the muffins down though. He was committed. Um, and those, are, those are some of the silly ones, you know, like, like silly mistakes. But I can tell you about big mistakes. Like I was there, I just pulled them right out of the air to tell you about big mistakes. Hey, I can tell you about the time when I just lit a, a five-gallon bucket on fire and Terry was standing right next to it. Stupidest moment of my entire life. I, I think about that often, to be honest with you. I, I can tell you about the time I, I joked around at church. I gave somebody a visitor's packet after they missed church for a couple of months. One of the dumbest things I've ever done. I can tell you about the time that I went back for a friend who was lying to me straight through his teeth. I, I can tell you about that. I can wrap all of these things up. And we could spend the rest of the day just uh, me relaying stories of my dumbness um, to, to you. Um, but that's not why I'm actually here. I'm here to talk about these dumb things because we all kind of hold on to them for some reason. A lot longer than we should, and a lot tighter than we could. Let's start with the word of prayer and I'll tell you what it means. Dear God, 
Thank you for today, for this moment, for this time. God, I ask that you would just uh, keep us awake. Help us in the side as we go to college, God. And help us to apply whatever it is your scripture tells us. We pray this in Jesus' name. When we come to today's scripture, we find that we are at the very end of the book of John, and at the end of John's telling the, the story of Jesus um, in, in the Gospels. And at the end of this book, we find Jesus doing something pretty awesome. But once again, you have to know what came before this in order to understand what is specifically happening now in this section. In this section of scripture, that rack is where at the end Jesus has been crucified. He's been uh, dead for three days, raised back from the dead, has now come and appeared to the disciples on multiple occasions. Um, and during this appearance, he's actually spending a good bit of time with Peter. And if you were to look in your Bibles, if you open your Bibles, uh, lots of times at the, the beginning, the heading of this section, it, it's, it's written something like, Jesus reinstates Peter. So something of that. Is that what it says? That's what you're... Yeah, Jesus reinstates Peter. Um, and if you look back, what happened leading up to Jesus' death, then you understand why Peter needed to be um, reinstated. You see, at the, the Passover, um, the night that Jesus was arrested, Jesus was uh, sitting around at the table with his disciples, and he said, hey guys, listen, very soon I'm going to be arrested, going to be beaten, going to be killed, and when this happens, everyone that I love is going to abandon me. It's, gonna, it's just going to go running away. And Peter speaks up. He's like, no, no, not me, Jesus. Absolutely not. I mean, even if everybody else here runs away, I will stand by your side faithfully until the end. I will never do it. Never do it. And Jesus says, Peter, before the rooster goes to the line, you're going to deny me. You're, you're going to deny me. Um, and you know what happened. I mean, when it came time for Peter to put his money where his mouth was, he came up short of cash. He did not live up to his words and broke that promise to the Lord. Not just once, not just twice, but three times. Three times he denied knowing Jesus after saying here that he would never do that. Three times he does it to save his own neck. And on the third time, Peter even calls down curses on us. He says, curse me if I am lying about knowing this man. I have no idea who he is. And at that moment, if you look in the, in the book of Luke, Luke tells us that Jesus turned. And looked right at Peter. Right at Peter and the rooster crowed. And Peter knew that in his darkest hour, he had just turned his back on his best friend. And not only had he done that, but he had watched him. Jesus had watched him do that. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine those feelings, the feelings of guilt and remorse? Man, the, the guilt that Peter had to, to be facing, it, this scripture tells us that he, he ran away and wept. At that moment in time, shame just had to be coursing into his body. You know, I feel bad when I disappoint a friend. I do. I, I feel worse when I disappoint someone else than I do when I disappoint myself. But Peter, he turns back to Jesus and Jesus while he walks. That's messed up. And, and I think if you were to ask Peter, the same questions that I asked you this morning. Hey, Peter, remember your good stuff and your bad stuff. What do you think is going to come to his mind first? Is it going to be the time that he walked on water and when he cast out demons, when, when, he, when he stood by Jesus uh, and fought for him? Or is it going to be quick to remember when he denied Jesus? When he abandoned him? When Jesus watched him betray him? I think we probably know by personal experience which one he's going to remember. Yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do. We, we replay our dumb mistakes over and over and over again in our minds. And, and, and we don't just replay it when we disappoint ourselves. But I told you this. I think we do it so much more so when we disappoint someone else. When we think, oh, I've, I've let them down or I've hurt them. We just keep going through it over and over in, in our minds. Um, and I think where this came from was I was, uh, I was in Walmart this past Monday along with everyone in Butler and all of the surrounding areas. We were all in Walmart at the same moment on the same day. I don't know if everybody got off work for, for that day and thought, hey, let's go to Walmart after lunch, because uh, that's what we were doing. Um, Terry, my mom, and the, the two girls, we went shopping on that day. Kayla opted out for some reason. I don't know what the boy doesn't love to go shopping all day long. Um, but we, were, we had already shopped for a couple of hours. And then uh, we ate lunch, and then it was time to go to Walmart. And this, the other stores, they were busy. Walmart, crazy. 
like absolutely crazy. Like he thought it was like uh, Black Friday all over again. Um, it, it was just insane. So I'm taking the girls from one end of the store to the other end of the store so we can grab something for Terry's birthday. And in the middle of one of those big aisles, you know, the big aisles that were walking all the way across the length of the store, there was a clearance bin with $2 flip flops in them. And the, the bin was like this high. And the girls would say, hey, can we get a pair of this for, for a vacation? Yeah, we can. So I'm standing there, um, right up against this bin, pretty much on my tiptoes, looking down in, digging through the, the flip flops to, to try to get some of them. Um, and the girls, I know they're somewhere behind me, and uh, I figure, oh, I know exactly where they are, because I hear a, a guy who comes up in the car say, Excuse me! And I think, because I'm looking in the bin like that, I think, oh, they didn't really want to be in the way again. I just kind of walk aimlessly around. I don't know if your kids have ever done that. Um, so I feel like I walk past, I think that they must have gotten out of the way, walks by, and it's a big house, so he can make it pretty easy. And then I hear uh, the, the voice from behind me, a little bit further away, and said, Fine! Don't move out of the way! And I thought, oh my goodness, who this guy's talking to? And I look back, and like 15 yards away stands this guy, and he's looking directly at me. And I'm like, Is he, is he talking to me? And, and the guy yells at me, he keeps yelling, he says, yeah, I'm talking to you. You don't even have the decency to move away when somebody asks you to. I mean, clearly the crowds of Walmart have gotten to this man in a serious way. And I, I wish right now that I could tell you that I just brushed it off if somebody had a bad day. I wish I could give you an example of what to do whenever you're tempted. I mean, I'd like to, to give you all of those things, but I'd be lying. I wish I could tell you that I apologize to you guys. Oh man, sorry, I didn't know that I didn't know you were talking. I wish I wish I could tell you that I did that. Um, that's not what I did either. Nope. I yelled back at the guy. No Walmart. Like, Your pastor is screaming at another person in Walmart. Yeah. And I yelled, Are you seriously talking to me? Are you talking to me? He's like, Yeah, I'm talking to you. You don't have the decency to move out of the way when somebody asks you to. I said, I'm standing as tight as I can up against these flip flops. What do you want me to do? Climb up inside them so that you can move on past and have a clear way? And my face was like up in here. You know, in those cartoons where like the top blows off and the steam is coming up, that's what I felt like at that moment. I felt slightly crazy. Um, and I think he knew that I felt slightly crazy because he looked back at me and then he thought, all right, I'm just going this way now. Um, <laughs> Flip flops are pretty important to that guy. Um, but uh, I, I, I want to tell you this with all honesty. Like, he stopped. He eyed me up for, for a minute. And, and I really felt like at that moment of time, if that man came towards me, that your pastor would have been in a fist fight in the middle of Walmart <laughs> over some flip flops. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the best headline in Butler Eagle? <laughs> Pastor arrested over $2 flip-flops. Yes, yeah. It would have been really worth it. And as he turns around and he begins to walk away, I, I look around me because I want to see if there's other people that saw this so that they can take my side, you know, so that they can say, hey, you're not crazy. That guy was kind of rude. So I look around and nobody was, I think they've probably seen four other people screaming at each other. So it was old news now in Walmart on that day. Um, and as I look back, I see him walk away with his two kids. They're a little bit smaller than my kids. And then I realize, huh, yeah, my girls are here. I forgot all about that. I forgot all about that. My girls hear me talk all the time about forgiving people. Every day. Every day I talk about forgiving people. My girls have been lectured more times than not about paying back wrong for wrong. My girls have been taught every single time that revenge is never right. Never the right action. Those are the two girls that are with me. Those are the two girls that are standing by my side as I'm screaming at me in the middle of Walmart. I mean, you know, it's a, it's one thing to do something wrong and disappoint yourself when nobody else is around. It's a completely different ballgame when somebody you love is watching, isn't it? And it's especially during those moments. Those moments where you not only think back at your own stupidity, but you think back about the fact that they were able to witness it, that really kind of stick with it. It's kind of hard to get rid of those moments. I think that's what Peter was feeling, but to a whole another level. When we look at today's scripture, we see how Jesus handles Peter's betrayal, this moment that we know Peter isn't going to be able to let go of. 
very easily. I mean, I know how I would have handled it, but I already told you that last, last week I talked about the image model. This week, I think that's me. I think that's me. Because then I think about how, how would uh, uh, I have handled this? Well, I would look him in the eyes and I said, well, we're going to be training. Seriously, I did. It wasn't that you that was sitting at that table told me that you would never leave me, that you would never walk away, that you'd be the one that was standing there for me uh, for, for all time, no matter what it meant for you? I saw you. I saw you. Do you have any idea how much that hurt? That's what I would have done. That's what I would have done. I think everybody would have said, yeah, you have every right. You are entitled to do that. But that's not what Jesus did. What did Jesus do? He doesn't go down there. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter answered, yeah, I do. I do. Peter, my sweet. Peter, do you love me? Yeah. Well, Jesus, I do. Take care of my land. Peter, do you love me? Jesus, yeah. I told you. You know everything. You know how I feel about you. I love you. I love you. Feed my sheep, Peter. Feed my sheep. You know what he's telling Peter? He's saying, listen, you did it three times. But I know you love me. And that more than makes up for it. So guess what? Get back to work, please. Get back to work. Don't let this hold you back. I, I still want you to work for me. And I think he needed to do this for Peter because so many times we get stuck whenever we sin. Especially when we sin in a way that disappoints ourselves or disappoints someone else. And, and we just kind of stay there. And we can't stop thinking about it. We replay it over and over and over again in our minds. Um, and we think about what we could have done, or what we should have done, or what we would do differently if we actually had the opportunity to do it all over again. And, and, and we think about how this mistake has set ripples through the pond. And we think about how people's opinions of us have probably changed now because of what we've done. And they're never going to think of us the same. And, and when we think about this one mistake, and we turn a big mistake into something big that holds us back and doesn't allow us to move on. And we become afraid, afraid, afraid of making those same mistakes over again, afraid of the repercussions of our actions, afraid of seeing if those around us still love us or, or what they're thinking about us, afraid that we can't be forgiven, and afraid that we're not wanted. We're not wanted because of what we've done. We get stuck. And we get stuck because, frankly, we would rather do nothing than to get it wrong again. So we turn inward. And instead of sticking our necks out and having them lopped off, we hide. And that's why Jesus asked Peter three times to love him. Three times for those three mistakes that Peter made. And it's Jesus' way of saying, it's all for getting you back to work. And that's, that's what we need to know, guys. That's what we need to know. Listen. You will never be perfect. I will never be perfect. We will make mistakes for the rest of our lives. Some of those mistakes will be repeats of mistakes that you've already made before. You will hurt the people you love. You will. Absolutely. These are some of the facts of life that come with our sinful nature. It's why we need a Savior. Because we can't stop doing these things. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not telling you that I want you to go out and do whatever you want to do because you're going to mess up. I mean, that's, that's not what I'm trying to get you to understand. I want you to be like, Pastor Pete said, I'm going to sin, so I might as well make it big. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that a memorable sin, a sin that sticks with you, one that has hurt others, an action that you feel ashamed of, it doesn't have to be an end. It doesn't have to be an end. Instead, it can be a new beginning. You're going to mess up. But don't let these mistakes haunt you for the rest of your days. Don't let them take the wind out of your sails. Don't get stuck. Get stuck in it. Am I proud of the way that I acted at Walmart this past week? Absolutely not. Am I ashamed? Yes. Am I more ashamed because I hid that in front of my daughters? 100%. Absolutely. If they weren't there, I don't even know if I would have felt too guilty about it. But it's okay. I mess up. You mess up. You don't have to get stuck. Jesus forgave Peter for denying him three times while he watched. If Jesus can forgive that, he can forgive 
Jesus forgives you. Now go forgive yourself. And then after you do that, guess what? You've got to do the same thing as Jesus did. You've got to get back to work. Do what it takes to learn from that mistake and then move on. Your sins that Jesus declares, it is forgiven. So let go of that hurt, that pain. Get out of the mud. Sorry. The world needs people like you. And me. Mistakes and all. Let's pray. Dear God, we are a sinful people, and we know that, God. There's no reason for us to pretend like we are better than anyone else. We make the same mistakes as everyone else makes. Help us to not be people who, who try to cover up sin, God, but allow us to use that sin as a motivation to be better the next day, God. And allow us to let go of whatever guilt we're holding on to. May we offer ourselves the same forgiveness that you have given us through the cross. We pray this in Jesus' name. Let us continue our worship this morning by the giving of